Good morning, world. I am Judy, your web-based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five things we can do to get ready for seasonal affective disorder season or winter blues season, also known as winter depression season. And as we are having to do that during the pandemic this, this year, um, because we know that as the days start to get gloomier and darker. Many people will soon start experiencing the symptoms of winter depression or or winter blues. But this year, of course, we know that many people have, there has been an increase in depression because we have been going through this um, pandemic. So I want to talk about that. But before I get into that, I want to say, if you are subscribed, thank you so very much for being a part of our world. If you are not yet subscribed, please click the subscribe button below so that you can become a part of our wonderful world. And remember to tick the bell so that you are notified when I post new things because, and so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, there's also a link below that will take you to a website that shows you all the different places, your different options for getting one or three of my books. Okay, first thing, get your environment winter ready. A, few, a while back, I posted a video talking about um, ways to get ready for a seasonal affective disorder season. Um, but things like decluttering, that was one of the things I talked about in that video. Making your home a lot more welcoming, a lot more friendly, a lot more like a place where you want to be spending a lot more time. We've already been spending a lot more time at home because of the pandemic. Now we're going to be spending a lot more time at home because of the pandemic and the fact that it is winter. So there will likely be less access to outdoor activities. So you want to make sure that your home is at is as happy feeling generating as you could possibly get it because that's where you're going to be for a whole lot of time. Things like making sure finding making sure that you're finding new ways to add more light into your home whether this is a home that you've been in for several years or a new home that you're in, find ways to get as much light in there, as much sunlight in there. And if you don't have as many, if you don't, um, one of the things I always tell people, if you don't have windows, get mirrors to bounce that light from each, from the one window that you have into the place. Um, Decluttering to to make sure that, um, to help your home feel more airy. All those things that make your home more welcoming, make your home feel lighter, reduce um, that gloom from Keep trying to keep the gloom from outside from coming into your home. Two, create a healthy winter plan. During the winter, we have a tendency to do things like eat all comfort foods that make us feel a little bit better, that make us feel a little bit warmer or things like that. But I, I often talk about the importance of providing that fuel for your body in order for it to be in the position to do the things you're asking it to do. So make sure that as you're getting into your your healthy winter plan includes how you are going to physically maintain your body, meaning things like exercise. During the winter, you know access to exercise can sometimes change. Make a plan for getting the exercise that you need. Eating healthier or eating healthy if you've been eating healthy and you want to continue where you've been or if you maybe you want to improve. What are you going to be doing to make sure that you're able to keep that? Your social and emotional health are also very important. During the pandemic, um, access is reduced. We haven't been, um, we've been socially distancing for quite a bit now, or at least physically distancing. So making a plan so that you're able to keep that social, emo- uh, that social interaction, that you're able to keep connected to people in your life, that you're able to get that Um, that energy that we get from other people. So make sure that your um, your plan includes those types of things from physical, physically, emotionally, mentally, um, all the leads. Um, three, have regular human interaction. Especially um this year, it's been a lot tougher because many of us have gone from having regular office work or whatever physical where you physically go to work to now working from home. And some of us have been a lot more isolated than normal. And it's important that we have that regular human interaction. As much as you may have talked about your um, colleagues, 
you enjoyed talking to them, you spent time with them, they provided that social interaction that you that you needed um, when you went to work. So now that we don't have, or we may, some many of us don't have the going to work, it's important that you're keeping that, um, you're finding ways to make regular human interactions. No, social media does not count. Going at it with some troll or even a person you know but disagree with on social media does not count. I'm not even a fan of text as a way to have human interaction because you don't get that emotional exchange as much on a text that you do that you get when you're having a, an actual conversation that when we interact with people, we get energy from them, they give us um we give energy to them. There's that exchange that I don't feel that that exchange happens over text. So things like calling people, that call feature that you've been paying for, see if it still works. You know, um, reaching out and there may you may not be able to go out all the time, but how can you get some interaction with other people, whether it's from being outside or from on the phone, just find ways to have regular daily would be ideal that you at least every day talk to another person, not via text, but in actual, hey, I had a conversation, use my lips and you instead words, that kind of interaction. Four, create an outdoor space. One of the things that we noticed at the beginning of the pandemic was that many things ended up closing. And when things closed, a lot of people were stuck at home because they did not have access to an outdoor space um, at home or a personal outdoor space. Just in case we end up dealing with some of something like that, make sure that you have somewhat of an outdoor space. It could be a porch that you are able to put a chair in a table, maybe a chair in not even another, not even a table. Maybe all you have to, um, space for is a chair where you sit there and have your coffee, get some sun, that kind of stuff. Or maybe it's your, your, um, you have a balcony, whatever it is that you have where you could create a little bit of an outdoor space where you could somewhat comfortably, as comfortably as you can in the winter, sit and, you know, spend some time, get whatever little sun is out that day. Um, create a bit of an outdoor space. And the other thing about it is, even though um, many of us rely on those common shared, um, those common um, areas, common, um, those public areas, things like parks and, you know, that kind of stuff. But sometimes you're, uh, you don't feel like getting to it. And sometimes you're unable to get to it. Maybe there's a snow day. The way 2020 has been going, I don't know how many snow days we're going to get. So make sure that you have a way to get a little bit of outside into your day, even if you're not able to go out and go for walks and things like that. Five, set things in place to help keep you centered. This could be things like meditation, making sure that you have and keep a regular meditation schedule. A lot of times what people do is they'll plan in, um, say they are going to do it, but the things we do for ourselves, a lot of times we end up getting those to be becoming those things that we do if and when we have time and we usually don't have time. If you're going to set a meditation schedule, make sure you set it and stick with it because this is something that you're doing not just not just because you want to do it, but because it could be very important to you and your health. So set up, if, um, if, med if you're a meditator, set a meditation schedule. Maybe um, make prayer. Prayer is a good way to help me. For many people, prayer is a good way to get centered. If that is how you get centered, find or dedicate a little bit of extra time for your devotions, for your prayers, for your um, whatever, uh, for your reading of whatever it is that you do. If yoga is your thing, yoga is a way of getting to killing two, or I don't want to say killing, of getting two things accomplished at the same time, because you will get the exercise while you are getting, um, while you are also getting centered. Um, journaling is a good way of just releasing all the stuff that is in your head, all the stuff that is um, troubling and bothering you and keeping you from sleeping at night. Journaling is a good way of getting that out. Gratitude journaling is a good way of helping you get centered. Whatever way that you normally get centered, make sure that you set set that in place, set schedules, 
put it on your calendar so that you don't just intend to do it, but you find the time and actually do it. Okay, let's do a quick recap. One, get your environment ready for winter. Um, um, two, create a healthy winter plan, including your physical, emotional, social, and all the, in every aspect, you want to make sure that you have a plan for, to have a healthy winter. Three, have regular human interactions. This is not social media, actual talking, using your words in your lip, coming from your lips into somebody's ear kind of interaction with other people. Four, create an outdoor space, something that you have easy access to if you don't feel like or you're not able to go out that day, but at least you're able to step outside for a few minutes and get some sun. And finally, set things in place to help you get centered. This could be anything that works for you, whether it's prayer or meditation, yoga, journaling, whatever it is. Make sure that you set aside time, plan on doing it, and actually get it done. Um, as always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able, and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So. Please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, world. Have an awesome day.